Hello, I'm glad you could join us for this time of prayer and reflection for Good Friday. First, a prayer. Almighty God, as we stand at the foot of the cross, help us to see and know your love for us, so that in humility, love and joy, we may place at his feet all that we have and all that we are, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Shut away in twos and threes, maybe alone. Frightened for oneself and others. I mean, who knows who might be taken next. Hopes and dreams shattered. Plans out the window. Well, that was life for the disciples on Good Friday. So I think this year we can probably identify with them more than ever. Most of them had fled when Jesus was arrested and they were hunkering down, self-isolating if you like in rooms that they'd rented or in the houses of friends, terrified they'd be arrested next and share the same fate as Jesus. The only one of the original 12 we know for sure stayed close to Jesus as he was crucified was John. Alongside him, we're told, was a group of women. Was it just that they were braver than the men or did they feel they were in less danger, less likely to be arrested? Who knows? But anyway, they stuck around. Good on them and were witnesses to what happened to Jesus on Calvary. And what they saw must have horrified them. They've seen him nailed to the cross and screaming out in pain. Imagine if that was your son, your friend, the person who'd healed you. We take up the story in Mark 15, verse 34. Jesus has been on the cross for six hours. At three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. What must it have been like for them to hear that terrible cry, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Don't bear thinking about, does it? But even in the middle of their grief and horror, I'm sure most of them would have recognised that Jesus' words were actually a quotation, a quotation from the Psalms, which they, like Jesus himself, would have been brought up on and which were as familiar to them as our favourite hymns and worship songs probably are to us. So when Jesus shouted out, I'm sure they'd have recognised the opening words of Psalm 22, which go like this. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? so far from the words of my groaning. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. You probably know that in the Bible, one of the names for Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Good Friday shows us what that means for Jesus. It's not being with us up to a point, but with us all the way. Not just being born as one of us, but also sharing the worst that could be thrown at anyone. 
betrayal, humiliation, total distress and an agonising death. He's with us, all right. With us in the good times and with us in the worst of times. Not saying they're there from a safe distance, but totally involved and committed to our cause. Or as St Paul puts it, probably quoting an early Christian hymn, Christ Jesus, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. But back to Psalm 22. As the women and John recalled Jesus shouting out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I'm sure that sooner or later they'd have remembered how the psalm goes on. Well, thankfully, the writer eventually surfaces from the depths of despair and in the second half of the psalm is able to say, I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly, I will praise you. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. But that's for the future. We know that in two days' time we have Easter and we can celebrate then. But now, as we look at Jesus on Good Friday, sadness and grief and shame are the right response. As Stuart Townend puts it in his song, How Deep the Father's Love for Us, he says, Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. So if today is a bad day for you, and all of us are getting those days from time to time, remember one of the things Good Friday shows us is that Jesus really is Emmanuel, God with us. He's been there. He understands. He's with us every step of the way. And he says, I am with you always. To close, two prayers and a blessing. First, a 16th century German prayer, and then a contemporary one from Tierfund. Let's pray. Oh God, Heavenly Father, you have drawn us all to yourself through the anguished suffering of Jesus Christ, who cried out, My God, why have you forsaken me? For the sake of your Son, do not forsake us when we bear our heaviest crosses and afflictions, but reach out to us and uphold us with your fatherly grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of love and light, in this time of fear, give us your peace. In this time of isolation, give us your presence. In this time of sickness, give us your healing. In this time of uncertainty, give us your wisdom. In this time of darkness, shine your light upon us all. In Jesus' name, Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love, now and forevermore. Amen.